Thank you for that introduction. I hope the dean realized, because I was going to say, I hope he realized that I'm much smaller than I was a few years ago. So we need more staff so that we have more shoulders and people to tend to all our, our, our students that apply here. But yes, welcome from my side also. Um, I'm the, uh, in the undergraduate student administration and we are responsible for the administration of all the application, uh, applications that we receive yearly. Thank you also parents and learners for the opportunity that I can be here today to share our information on our selection and admission criteria to you. And I hope and I trust that whatever information I give you, that it will be informative and that it will give you an idea of what is expected of your, your children when they do submit applications. And being a parent myself, I know how stressful it can be when your kids have to apply to university, and I think even more so when you apply to a faculty uh, where the, there's only a limited number of places available and so many students want to apply, I think it, it, it just adds more flame to your anxiety that you have because we all just want the best for our kids. Be it as it may, and also I just want to mention, just because we work at the university doesn't mean we get extra privileges. Our kids have to stand in the same queues and follow the same processes as all the other learners. So we really do understand and know exactly what it is that you as parents and learners are going through. Our admission for, um, I'm sure you've all heard a lot of stories uh, about learners with 8 and 10 distinctions who hasn't been selected for medicine. And, and I think it, it, it's sad sometimes because, as I said, we only want the best for our kids and they work extremely hard to be successful. All our degree programs in the Faculty of Health Sciences is subject to a selection process. So, and we only have a limited number of places available. The places that are available for health science uh, degree programs are also regulated by the Health Professions Council of South Africa, and they need to make sure that we don't compromise on the quality and, and, and also the training of health professionals uh, that we are training. Um, and, and you would probably say, but we need more doctors, we need not more dentists and physios in the country, why don't we select more? And Remember, it's also the university's responsibility to make sure that there are enough resources, lecturers, and staff so that we can train all these health professionals and also at the end to make sure that when they do complete their qualifications that they are actually placed in a position somewhere in the country. So based on that, we can only accommodate a certain amount of students. Now, if we look at our... Um, Statistics, oh, I don't have it on the screen now, but if I can just give you some numbers of our applications that we received for 2018. We received over 10,000 applications for the faculty in total, of which only 950 first-year students can be accommodated, and that includes all our degree, um, 11 degree programs that we offer. For medicine, for example, there we received close to 5,000 applications for which there's only 300 places available. So you can see and you can just imagine um, how extremely stressful it can be um, to make sure that we, we select the best students that, that will be able to um, uh, service the, 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 the people of the country after they've done their selection. Um, there's just a, an indication of the number of students that we do select for each program. For the Bachelor in Clinical Medical Practice, we select 80. Uh, for that program, we received 701 applications. For dentistry, we received 1,261, and we can only select 70 students. And then, of course, for Bachelor of Oral Hygiene, received 220 applications, and we can only uh, uh, select 25. Now, you all um, know that our applications have opened. Uh, Prof. Diagra has already mentioned our closing date, end of May. So if you have not submitted your application form yet, please do so immediately. Everything is done online. There's no need for you to complete a, a, 
applica uh, paper application. Um, the grade 11 learners, if there are any in the venue, your turn will only be next year when you then have to apply for uh, 2020. Now, our, sel our criteria for all our students, and that includes the medicine, dentistry, oral hygiene, and the bachelor in clinical medical practice, we these students are all, or candidates, are all considered based on three factors, which is the final grade 11 results, the national benchmark test, as well as the value added form. Now firstly with the final grade 11 results, we only do our provisional selection based on those results, no other results. We unfortunately do not do selection based on prelim marks or any other marks. So if you did not do your best in grade 11, there's nothing that you can do about that now, but um, look forward and, and make sure that whatever other tests lay ahead that you make sure that you do well in those. So for your grade 11 average, we use six subjects, uh, life orientation, AP meds excluded. So the average of those subjects are then calculated and that average contributes 60% towards a merit score that we calculate for you for uh, selection. Also very important, the national benchmark test. The test, there are various dates that are available throughout the year, but for health sciences, um, learners can write the test up until the 7th of July. If you do write the test later than 7 July, the university is not going to receive the results in time when we do selection in August. So please make sure that as soon as the NBT website opens, that you register, log on to their website and go and register for a date and a venue that is convenient for you. According to NBT rules, you may write the NBT twice, but for selection purpose, the university will only use the NBT results of the test that you've written first. So if you decide to write the first test and maybe the last one on the, on the 7th of July, we will only use the first test results for selection purpose. So also make sure that on the day that you write the test, that you the previous evening that you're well rested, um, so that you can write. If you feel that you're sick on the day of the exam, please just mention it to the invigilators and try and then reschedule, but make sure that it's before the end of, um, uh, before the 7th of July. Um, the NBT contributes 40% towards the selection. So we will then calculate an average based on the three components. Learners will be writing an academic literacy, quantitative literacy, and a maths test. But also the average that is calculated, it's not a normal average where you add the three up and divide it by three. Your academic literacy will count 20%, quantitative literacy 20%, and math 60%. So it's important that you do equally well in all three of the tests, but more, uh, I think even more in the, the maths component because it counts uh, 60%. Because a lot of learners are not selected based on the maths that they did not perform in uh, that round. And then the last factor that we take into account is the extracurricular activities, which comes in the form of a value added form. Now the value added form is not available beforehand, um, we prefer to only make that form available to learners who comply with the minimum requirements because we don't want to give people um, an uh, expectation that if you've worked hours and hours of community service, then you have a better chance if your uh, academic marks are maybe not as high. So once you've submitted your application and the, app and the faculty has reviewed the application, the form will then be made available online to you on your student portal. And don't worry, all that information will be emailed to you to give you clear instructions on how to complete it. The value added form has four components, which is your leadership, cultural activities, sports achievements, and then of course community service that you've worked um, 
and, and also very important, only activities or extracurricular activities that has been done in grade 11 and or 12 are taken into consideration. So anything that you've done prior to grade 11, we're not going to look at that information. For community service, because one of the questions that we normally get is around community service and learners want to know what kind of community service must I do, where can I do community service and what, uh, what is the number of hours. The, we don't prescribe where you have to do community service of, or what kind of community service you have to do. It, it depends on you. Um, learners can either do community service in a public or private institution. It can be in a church uh, setup or an outreach with your school. Um, the choice is yours. Um, what, what you just need to remember, um, if you, whatever you do, um, if you go to a hospital or school, please just make sure that you do get proof from the person because those are all information that you'll have to upload once you capture all this information. Also, in order for a learner to get the maximum score when they do community service, any community service that you've worked three hours and more, you can qualify for the maximum score, which is 10. You cannot get more than 10 points for that component. If you want to qualify for the minimum, then you'll have to work at least 50 hours. The value added form must also be completed by the 30th of June. So I would suggest that whatever you want to do, try and do all your community service or your sport or leadership things by mid-June so that you sure that you can submit all the documentation and complete the form by the end of uh, July, uh, June, sorry, 30 June. What else? As soon as we get all the info, uh, marks of the grade 11 average, the national benchmark test, and the value added form, we will then, if I say we, I actually mean the computer because we have all these formulas are worked into uh, uh, on our system. All those marks will then be calculated to uh, in, in a combined score that we call a merit point score. And based on that merit score, we'll then do our selection of our first year students um, based on where the students rank. We usually select students from the same list that we place on the waiting list. So in the event where students cancel their place because students apply to more than one university to uh, also increase their chance of getting in, um, we then, if, so if someone cancel, someone from the waiting list might be placed or in the event if someone forfeit their place. Because even if you've been selected on condition, the, one of the conditions are that your marks should not drop. So just because you're in doesn't mean you, you don't need to uh, keep on working hard. I've already mentioned the national benchmark test. And like I say, remember, 7 July, the due date for you to write the NBT. And the value added form, of course, all that information that you need. Also, with leadership, um, if you are, um, are head boy, head girl, deputy, prefect, class mentor, those are all information that you can put on. If, because we've had in the past where um, after our selection, learners would come back and say, but I had trouble accessing the form. If you do have any problems to access the form or to complete it, please contact us and don't wait until after you get your result where you're unsuccessful because then it's not going to help. When our selection committee convenes in August, then that's the information that we use. So learners should know by the end of August whether they've been selected, waitlisted, or unsuccessful for medicine. This is just an example of how uh, the merit point score is calculated. So you'll see if, um, if an average is 96.17, with those three NBT scores, the merit score 
would then be 94.9, and that is the score uh, that a learner is being selected on. The value-added score is not part of the academic score. That's a score that is separate because we do select a few uh, candidates based on the academic, uh, the non-academic uh, component, and that is out, uh, out of a score of 40. Sorry. Then lastly, if you've not been selected for medicine during the first round of selection, don't despair. You can still apply or register for BSc in your following year. For the purpose of the mid-year intake, we usually reserve about 30 places for medicine and about 10 places for dentistry. The students would then, in their first semester, they register for modules that are exactly the same as our medicine students. So after the conclusion of first semester, we'll then look at their first semester marks, and based on that, we'll select the top 30 students for medicine or for dentistry. And also note that this mid-year intake option is only applicable to medicine and dentistry. Oral hygiene, uh, bachelor in clinical medical practice, or any of the other degree programs in the faculty does not have the same, um, it's not applicable to them because their course structure is, is different to what the medicine students are. And then all I can say, there's no secret recipe or um, shortcuts for students to get in. Um, there, there are students outside, and I'm sure they're also going to talk to you on their experiences as students, and I know there's even some of the students who didn't make it after their first, um, after in, in matric in medicine, and they went on the BSc route and they were successful. So if you don't make it in the first round, try again. Um, in the end, I know where when, like they would say. So that's it from me. And I hope that uh, the information that I've shared with you, that it's valuable and that you uh, will be able to uh, make use of it. If you have any queries, we will be outside the venue after uh, the session, so you're welcome to come and have a, a talk with me. Thank you.